It was a very convoluted time. There were a multitude of secret societies. From about 1888, well into the 1920s, hundreds of secret societies formed, reformed, and gave birth to new and even more secret subgroups. Some were dangerous nationalistic orders, like the Serbian Black Hand Society, responsible for the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. Black Hand Society was largely responsible for the First World War. And many of the era's dark fellowships were simply racist, sharing the sentiments of Lanz von Liebenfels, who believed Aryans were gods. Most sources say that the Vril Society was founded in 1918 at a mysterious meeting in the Bavarian town of Berchtesgaden. It was a holiday center and would later house the country retreat of Adolf Hitler. It is said that in a mountain lodge, a group of occultists and high-ranking German nationalists secretly gathered to create a powerful inner circle called the All-German Society for Metaphysics, otherwise known as the Vril Society. Essentially, it was founded by uh, two people, Rudolf von Sebottendorf. Von Sebottendorf had been very active in the occult movement. He was a Freemason, an alchemist, and a founder of the Tula Society. Their belief in a mythical civilization was a precursor to Nazi Aryan ideas. The real name was Adam Glauer, and who was the son of an engine driver, but he gave himself, awarded himself a title of nobility. <laughs> In creating the Vril Society, von Sebottendorf was joined by a man who would darkly influence world history. The other main person within it was Dietrich Eckhart. He was said to have strong powers of persuasion, particularly in his anti-Semitic writings. Dietrich Eckhart was Hitler's closest personal friend between 1918 and his death in 1923. Eckhart believed he was paving the road for Germany's own saviour. He was, in many respects, a mad genius. And it's no accident he spent a great part of his time in and out of mental institutions. The founder of the Frill went by a very curious name. John the Baptist. And we all know that in the Bible, John the Baptist is a sort of a paver of the road for the true Messiah. Eckhart was also one of the masterminds behind the Nazi party. Eckhart saw Hitler as the German messiah. He saw him as the man sent to save the country. And he wasn't the only Vril founder who felt that way. It has been suggested that these two men were joined by two women, mediums responsible for finding the hidden occult truths and harvesting Vril. In those days, it was the golden age of what was known as physical mediumship, where not only were they forever moving objects and table turning and levitating, but also they used to produce a substance called ectoplasm out of their bodies. One of these mediums is said to have predicted the new German messiah. During her state of trance, she declared that the apparition she had given form to was going to be the next German messiah, who she proceeded to name as Adolf Hitler. So the Vril Society may have indeed paved the way for the person they would promote as the country's messiah. Their next step would have been to secure his ultimate weapon, Vril. They believed that that would give them power. This occult group of German nationalists may have grown quickly to become an elite inner circle of the Nazi party. Many of the top leaders, including Hitler himself, were members of the Vril Society. Karl Harrer, Anton Drexler and Dietrich Eckhart are three of the most important figures in the transition from the Vril Society to the Nazi Party. Eckhart was considered the darkest of them all and dedicated to Hitler's success. He did have certain perverse gifts and not least of which was his ability to uh, train Hitler in the use of, you know, what one might loosely call 
the power of a human heart and human mind. Hermann Göring, commander of the Luftwaffe, was said to be a member. It is virtually certain that he was introduced to it in around 1920, probably by Dietrich Eckhart. Alfred Rosenberg, Minister of the Third Reich, probably a member. Rosenberg believed that the Aryan race was superior to every other, of course. And, you know, he believed that Jesus was not Jewish, but an Aryan. Rudolf Hess, deputy Führer, another likely member. Hess believed everything. He used to sleep with magnets under his bed to try and draw off harmful emanations. Martin Bormann, chief of the Nazi party chancellery, also thought to be a member. Martin Bormann was probably considered the most evil one. He was an avowed and open Satanist. He was quite categorical about his desire to exterminate Christianity as well as Judaism because he saw Christianity as simply, as he called it, a Jewish perversion. And the most senior Nazi in the Vril Society, Adolf Hitler himself. A great many of the Vril Society members were conscious Satanists. And these evil men were emblazoned with a symbol, the swastika. The darkest side of the real was undoubtedly their belief, which dates back many thousands of years, that to sacrifice a young child will give more power than anything else if you are turning to the darkness. And that is what they did. After the First World War, many illegitimate and orphaned children lived in Bavaria children whose disappearance would go unnoticed. And legend had it that the vril of a child was the most concentrated and most powerful. They were seen as being gateways between the astral and the material world in a way that adults were not. So consequently, they were ideal victims for human sacrifice. <laughs> 